Perfect. Fucking awesome. What's up, guys? I'm really pissed today. I'm going to talk about some pretty serious shit and how this country is... The, the fundamentals of this country, the fundamentals this country was founded on, they are slipping from us. There is no separation of church and state anymore. The Republican Party does not uphold the Constitution like they claim they do. After yesterday's um, uh, abortion law, um, it is clear that they do not believe in the, uh, the Constitution. They do not believe in a fundamental requirement for any government to be successful, that there must be a separation of church and state. They don't seem to understand that. Our courts, the, the people that get the last say on any legislation, on the law of the land, in 2022, five out of the nine justices who make those decisions are Catholic fundamentalists. I'm serious. I'm serious now. They're all Christian, but let me see which ones are Catholic. Here. John Roberts, Clarence Thomas, <clears throat> Samuel Alito, Amy Comey Barrett's got to be one of the worst ones when it comes to um, Catholicism. But um, Amy Comey Barrett, yeah. Brett Kavanaugh, Catholic. So essentially, the Catholic religion is pretty powerful in the United States. Um, I grew up Catholic, so when I shit on Catholics, just know I get a pass, okay? When I say Catholics are fucking stupid, I get a pass. Why? Because I did all the bullshit sacraments besides marriage and death. Those ones go hand in hand. Let's be honest here, okay? But I did, the I did baptism, communion, confirmation, all that bullshit, right? All that bullshit. And it's all stupid. But the fact that adult people... Not only are making decisions in their life that revolve around this, this faith, but they're implementing it on other people as well. To the point where they, even Amy Comey Barrett, I'm pretty sure, believes women are nothing more than a vessel for men's reproduction. Why? Because a book that is now almost 2,000 years old said so anyways um yeah we're gonna keep we're gonna get to this but um i want to get to this first biden's response to it because i can totally i could totally see why people are just turned off by democrats democrats alone have not changed anyone's lives for the better while republicans actively pass legislation take inconvenience and take away rights from people. It's not like Democrats are doing anything about it. They just sit by and idly watch. When there's tax cuts given to rich people, Democrats like that for themselves. They just sit by and they idly watch, right? And here they are. The Republicans are, the right is actually out here taking away women's rights with their body. And this is happening under a democratic administration. So this further emphasizes something a lot of people had been thinking, which is Democrats are not there to help you. And it sure does seem that way. It sure that seems that way. But remember, while Democrats are bad, it gets a whole hell of a lot worse. So we're really on the last stand when it comes to democracy, basic and personal freedom. When a lot of last stands. These next two elections are not a joke. I know they always say the mo this, these next elections are, this election is the most important election of life. No. We have never been 
faced with the prospect of fascism like this. Us Americans, we have never we have never faced that prospect like we are now. So anyways, let's uh let's see Joe Biden and then you'll see Bamboo what he says Bamboo about this. Oh, I love this. I love this because it's so hypocritical. It's so hypocritical. Because he's right on one aspect. It starts here and then you're going to start after going your privacy and what you do with your body. Right? But now that we're on the subject of privacy, he's going to act like, watch, Democrats love to pretend like they're protecting your privacy. They speak out against it, but, Repu but Democratic congressmen every four years vote to still keep enacted the Patriot Act. So it's all word service when they talk about fighting for privacy. The lip service is the term, my bad. Question. I, I, I realize this goes back a long way, but one of the debates I had with Robert Bork was whether, whether uh, um, Griswold versus Connecticut should stand as law. Well. The state of Connecticut said that the privacy of your bedroom, you a husband and wife or a couple could not choose to use contraception. To use the contraception was a violation of the law. If the rationale of the decision as released were to be sustained, a whole range of rights are in question. A whole range of rights. And the idea of letting the states make those decisions, localities make those decisions. Who knows if they would ban contraception? I mean, I could see Amy Comey Barrett being for that, but I could see Brett Kavanaugh being like, no, 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 you know, but I could see Amy Comey Barrett um, being for, um, being for the banning of contraception. I don't, I mean, I kind of do know why I could see her in particular um, banning, con uh, being for something that draconian. Um, one, I'm Italian. And she's the most Catholic woman I've ever seen, heard of, whatever. She grew up in some, like, one of these, like, villages in Indiana where everyone's Catholic, right? And and men aren't allowed to refer to their wife as their wife. They have to refer them, to them as handmaids and shit. All right? This is, listen. There are forms of, the, the right constantly likes to bring up, uh, Forms of radical Islamic terror, you know, Islamic extremism. But, but what about Christian fundamentalism? What about Christian extremism? You know, we sit there and we're like, look at Muslim fund, uh, extremists are, are so prevalent that they don't even let women drive a car in Saudi Arabia. You know, they'll say something like that. You know, the adultery is banned. Look how, look how, look how extremist Islamic they are. Every, these Muslim countries, they have no freedom. And then you go here and you're like, uh, there's radical Christian extremism in our government, on our highest court in the land, doing extremist religious shit. I never want to hear the right say, call another Muslim country primitive. I never want to hear the right refer to uh, Muslim countries as third world that don't give their people's rights. Look at what we're doing here. We're doing essentially the same. We're, we're no different. We're, we're, I mean, there is degrees. We are not even close to the situation in a lot of Islamic countries, okay? But the fact that we're heading there, us, supposedly the most powerful country in the world, right 
the 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 pinnacle the uh, in most part we set the 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 country that set the precedent for the rest of civil of western civilization is moving in this direction towards third world authoritarianism and it's not just the hyde court in the land there's more to talk about in regards to this election but let's just keep watching this would be a fundamental shift in what we've done. So it goes far beyond, in my view, if it becomes the law and if what is written is what remains. It goes far beyond the concern of whether or not there is the right to choose. It goes to other basic rights, the right to marry, the right to determine a whole range of things. Because one of the issues that this court, many of the members of the court, a number of the members of the court, have not acknowledged is that there is a right to privacy in our Constitution. I strongly believe there is. I think the decision of this law was, was correct overruling. I think the decision of Roe was correct because there's a right to privacy. To what about respect time, towards women? Viewing, what about viewing women as equals? How about, how about that discussion? Well, you know, if, if this decision holds, it's really quite a radical decision. Um, and again, the underlying premise, and again, I've not had a chance to thoroughly go into the report, the, the, the decision. But it basically says all the decisions you made in your private life, who you marry, whether or not you decide to conceive a child or not, whether or not you can have an abortion. I don't think he's getting to the central. Decision. Point, but the, the the notion. See, I don't even know about the notion. About let me show you guys my. I, you know, I should show you guys my screen too. Um, cause CNN basically did a better job summarizing what he said over what I was just about to. Exp uh, how I was about to explain it, but Joe Biden, he's having trouble speaking, poor guy, or even right here, but he is right about basic rights being in jeopardy. To, uh, to the but he's one of, when he was in the Senate, no, when, when he was in Congress, yo, he was, he was fucking, he was, he was in the Senate particularly, but he voted for, to, 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 to renew the Patriot Act every time it came across his desk, like every four years, so don't even. I'm not, I'm not prepared to, to comment on that decision, because I think it's a decision that's been made by the there are decisions being made by the government that the majority of the population doesn't agree with. If that doesn't, it it's, smells like authoritarianism, sounds like authoritarianism, looks like authoritarianism. But, you know, uh, I think the codification of Roe makes a lot of sense. Look, I think what Roe said. Mitch, Mitch McConnell's a master legislator, too. Because, think about this, he was able to get draconian laws passed by packing, by trying to pack the courts, and right there, it is, re right there, regardless of who the president is, they'll still be able to push their agenda because of the courts. We have to, we would have to literally win every single election. You have to win every single election in which the other side, the Republicans, have gerrymandered, redistrict out of your favor. Think about that. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yo, you need to use this campaign on this and be like, this is what's going on. You cannot vote Republican this election. He's like, I haven't even thought about that. He should have right there said... Right here is why you don't vote Republican. Boom. Right there. Many of our basic rights are coming into question. It is, it is, 
imperative that our constituents see this and understand that they have to vote Republican. It is imperative that people understand that it is the Republican Party that is a threat to your basic rights. Think about that. That's that's how you campaign. Democrats a little milk toast, you know. It, the bare minimum of 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 they, they go for the throat when they campaign. Republicans, Dems. <laughs> Do changes need to be made to the court in light of this? If this no, we just have to choose. I mean, look, one of the reasons why I voted against a number of the members of the court, they refuse to acknowledge that there is a Ninth Amendment. They refuse to acknowledge the right to privacy. But, I mean, there's so many fundamental rights that are affected by that. And I'm not, allowed, I'm not prepared to leave that to the, the winds and the, and the, uh, of the public at the moment in local areas. Vacations helps get my flight. Here's Just what I think is going to happen. So because it's not like a federally, um, abortion is not a, it, it's not going to be a federally uh, protected right. The Supreme Court is a, not going to, um, is not going to stand by Roe, basically. So it's going to go to the states. Now, many Republican states will ban abortion. Many blue states will not. Okay? Yeah. No blue states will. Not one. Mark. But think about this. In Texas, when they tried it, they tried to do the six-week ban. Right? At six weeks, a lot of times you don't even know you're pregnant. You got a fucking zygote. Literally the, the size is the top of my finger. At that. They give you to the point where you get a pill. At six weeks. And, like that's that's the abortion right there. <clears throat> but um the thing is I understand people's um but I'm gonna make the screen larger again before we go to the next one because I um I think we need to be serious for a brief second here. Like, you know, just this stream, we talk about serious things. This stream, we talk about serious things all the time. But given the actions of the Republican Party over the last four years, um, the incitement of an insurrection and over to uh, overturn the results of a democratic election. Think about it. The, the very notion of democracy was, was jeopardized by the Republicans. The right here, the Republicans are je are jeopardizing our our basic rights. Right? And the way they've been able to successfully do this is by taking advantage of a relatively uninformed populace. I mean, think about this. Um most people I, I think most people are progressive and they don't realize it, but they see themselves as in the middle. Now when you're in a culture war, you're not looking at policy. This isn't a policy-based war between Democrats and Republicans. Not at all. The reason it's not policy-based is because, one, the Republicans, while they've had power, haven't really passed any serious policies um, besides banning shit that's, uh, that's totally fundamental to having a free society. And... Um, and uh, passing tax cuts for rich people. Neither of the things they've done legislatively, they can brag about. That's why they're always in a culture war. And they have to be. In order to survive, in order to keep the masses occupied, they have to have a culture war. Democrats, Democrats, however, policy-wise, they have some policies. All right, progressives have the most popular policies. Now, Progressives don't receive donor money, so it's much more difficult to get the message out to the people as what they would like to do policy-wise. However, Dems have, you know, policies that help the people in some way, but this is the thing. They, who do have the money from the same donors as the Republican, 
do not pass these policies, and it, even when they have power, and it almost seems purposely at this point, you know, because Republican policies happen to also benefit wealthy Democrats, particularly in Congress as well. So there is somewhat of a speculation to why the Democrats, even with power, seem to be, in my opinion, purposefully incompetent. Um, and they've been purposely incompetent for so long. I mean, they passed Obamacare, which was a step in the right direction, but they never went for They never really made any efforts to really reform health care like we should, you know. But that's all that, that right there is an example of purposeful incompetent. But that's an example of like they do the bare minimum, Dems. And the thing is, we're getting to a point in which people are like noticing, like, I voted for Dems before, and my life really hasn't gotten any better. And I understand people's frustration. I can see why people would stay home in the midterms, you know. Did your life really change under Democratic leadership? No. But think about this. Your life, your life, a woman's life in the United States got worse after this uh, right-wing Supreme Court decision. Remember that. Republicans actively pass legislation that hurts you. But the thing is, they can't brag about that legislation, so a lot of people are uninformed about it. Tax cuts for rich people hurts regular people. Tax cuts for the rich hurts regular, everyday Americans. Less social safety nets, you know, less funding for, for, for programs that people need, you know. Republicans love to deregulate. Who does deregulation hurt? Consumers. I mean, thing is, what do Democrats do to stop this? Even when they have power, nothing. And that's the problem. And that is the problem. There's more, there, there's more to it. There, 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 it, it. It is deeper than that because people are not voting for Democrats, might even vote Republican because they're willing to take a chance because they're desperate. That's why people voted for Donald Trump instead of Hillary Clinton. But Bernie Sanders outpolled Donald Trump in every single poll. Because people are desperate. So you got people taking a chance being like, you know what? I'm voting Democrat all my life. My life really hasn't gotten better. Let me try Republican. They don't know what they're doing. They're, they're, they're stupid. They're making a very bad decision. But they're desperate. We have to, we have to hone into that. You know? And I feel like really progressive members of Congress understand this, you know, but, um, but, and the people that stay home, they vote Democrat, you know, there's, there's regular people I know that are like, yeah, the Republicans are nuts, but the Democrats haven't really done anything. So what's the point of me even going voting? Nothing changes. That's the problem. That's why we're going to lose in 2022. And we cannot lose this race. We cannot lose 2024. We cannot lose 2022. Even while we have power, they're taking away basic rights. Abortion is a basic right. We don't even have basic rights that other Western countries have. Healthcare is a basic human right. Baby killer. <laughs> oh, yeah. But think about it. Anyways. There are, let's hear, yeah, I thought this, um, yeah, we're going to watch some cringe shit, okay? Um, actually, oh, I have these Susan Collins, and it's crazy. There's another thing, too. We still rely on Susan Collins to do the right thing when we have power that's how ineffective we are and susan collins has a track record of never doing the right thing she's just said a few progressive things on television before and we're always like hopefully she'll she'll vote against kavanaugh or something something like that you know 
So, anyways, I'm. What are we gonna watch first? What are we gonna watch first? What are we gonna watch first? Um, Steven Crowder saying some horrible shit, like. What people don't realize, too, is if you ban abortion, that doesn't make abortion go away. It just makes it way more dangerous and life-threatening for a woman to get an abortion that they will get. So you just made it completely unsafe now. You made abortions completely unsafe. All right. Let's see this. Expected. And by this, what I mean when I say as expected, I don't just mean that it's coming from the left. I don't just mean the type of reaction, but that the people who are uh, delivering these reactions also look exactly. Oh, let me, my bad. I, yo, I'm always forgetting to like, um, to like share my screen. I gotta, I gotta chill with that. Sorry about that, guys. All right. Exactly how you would expect them to. Enjoy. Oh, <laughs> it could also become a... No, it wasn't funny or like laugh at lib. Um. Okay, this next guy here, when they picture like not, when when Repu this guy has appeared in Republican nightmares. He has appeared in right wingers nightmares. You know, like it, you can just imagine like a Cletus or Dale in the middle of the night. <sighs> Where's my gun? I just had a bad dream. Criminal offense. It's black or Pete Davidson. Or manslaughter to have a miscarriage or carry out an abortion in a different state. Oh, this would be arguably the stupid. single largest slide into fascism for this country in living memory. Oh. And that is saying something. Do what Show you gotta hair. do, but be ready. I mean, he's right. This is like blatant fascism just because it's like in the medical field and not, you know, like, um, like old days fascism where it was just immediately direct policing like we're right there on the border with fascism like i don't i don't see that as a ridiculous statement at all but keeping this focus on abortion rights is that look there's lots of people who are ever sleep with a woman with a goatee about it. like <laughs> wake up next to clown all right he still hasn't got over it. like trans are like still goofy to him like trans are still just a funny subject to him like Dude. <laughs> so these are not tears of like sadness. These are tears of rage. <laughs> Your diet is the abortion. <laughs> oh, that's a good joke. Yo, I hate that dude. I do not think he's funny, but that is funny. Oh, that's good. That is a, that is such a good joke. Your diet is the abortion. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. Here's the thing. Sorry, not too far. No, it's not too far. It's not too far at all. It's at hominem. It's entirely appropriate because all of them are uh, scary. Now, well, especially the first one. It's like, what? You, you worry about? To him, guys. <laughs> You were what is it? You don't have to worry about that. No. Uh, you, uh, you, well, that's what I, I have a theory. Yeah. It's always really, really unattractive women who, for example, they bit about cat calling, bitch about yeah. abortion. And here's the thing: I know there are plenty of. No, it's women not. Who, who, where does he? Uh, get, who, it's only ugly women that bitch about cat calling. Like, where is he getting his shit from? Believe in the right to abortion. That being said, women who are attracted. This is just a theory. Just to be clear, this is just, this is just conjecture. Okay, I'm not a doctor on ugly chicks. <laughs> they they look like because attractive women who support abortion they still you know they're often because they can have they can speak whoever they want well they, they're, yeah they're interested in the, the choice but they're predominantly concerned with usually attractive women like hey I'm not a slut you know what I mean it's like right. hey I'm not a slut so they typically don't want to go out and shout their abortion these often women want to be like look so everybody wants to can't call me and I'm having so much sex that I have to have all these abortion you guys and everyone's like right sure oh oh he's a piece of shit but I kind of see that point. <laughs> I do. I really do see that point because from personal experience, it's always, it is always ugly women talking about how much sex they have. I'm just saying, I'm just saying like that is, and this one time, this one time, now this might not be the case, but I've had some experience. This one time I have an abortion joke. I do tell, I go, 
I got one of those Planned Parenthood um, membership cards. You know, you buy two abortions, you get the third one free. That's a joke that I tell, right? This one, like, she was like, she wasn't old, but she was like headed there. Like, she's like 40, maybe, like 45, right? And she just stands up, right? And she's like, I've had, she was like, I've had four abortions. And like complains. I'm like, oh, I just look at him like, oh, you are a mass murderer. Like, you know, as it's like a joke. Like, obviously she's not, if that's even true. But the fact that like it was a 40-45, I think she was just standing up to let everyone know, hey, I'm still sexually active. Like I that low key, I feel like that was her whole end game. I kinda I kinda see a similar thing to what he's saying, but He's dead wrong about literally fucking everything else. Somebody, uh, yeah, you walking down the street and a construction worker yelling, move, so yeah. they can see a hotter woman <laughs> is not that <dead> cold. Exactly. <laughs> uh, this just starts, he just starts aiming his pneumatic drill. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's, I mean, look, like, it's like Elena Dunham's like, oh my gosh, I hope not, I'm at this, because I'm party, I'm super drunk, I can mess relax, and I hope nobody ra rapes me. Like, you're good. Yeah, you're fine. Nobody, yeah. Yeah. nobody wants consent or Wait, anything. Have you noticed the playpen? Go in there. Enjoy. Everyone hates you. Yes. <laughs> You're an awful person. You're a terrible, terrible person. <laughs> now it got hacked. Um, they even, by the way, they even started supporting outside. We showed you this, but we have Supreme Court already. We will not go back. Abortion is out there. Yo, whenever, like, there's marches and protests and the right goes nuts, it's like, yo, do y'all remember when you guys, like, lost an election? Y'all, y'all... Yo, it became the purge, okay? That's how y'all protest. You know, they, they laugh at marching, and they're like, oh, marching is so annoying. At, at least we're, like, upholding standards. I thought, like, Henry David Thoreau, Martin Luther King and shit, you know, civil diso disobedience and pre peaceful protest, you know? Like, they're like, what losers? Peaceful protest? What are they? Following Martin Luther King's lead? It seems like they think that way because they get way more violent. Like, have you ever seen a Nazi protest or, I don't know, the insurrection? Like, I, I, I like, protests, like, I think they should do more than just fucking march at this point. Marching is just an eye roll at this point. When you protest, you gotta go in. You know? I'm not saying, I was saying get into trouble, but necessary trouble. You know? Like, uh... Fuck, now it's not coming. Who said necessary trouble? Sorry. John Lewis. Fuck. All right. Man, that one just skipped my mind. I want to forget him. But yeah, sometimes go to trouble. Like, these people ain't going to jail. You know what I mean? Sometimes you got to do some shit for the cause. You know that's one thing, too, that bothers me about the far left. It go, you know, we should go hard. We can't just make people roll their eyes, you know, every time there's the protest. Like, we gotta, sometimes, we don't gotta do hurt to people. We gotta fuck shit up, you know. Damage to property, property can be replaced, you know. This country, though, is obsessed with property to the point where even law enforcement is strictly there to protect property. Notice how they come after a crime occurs. They only come before if property is in danger. That's why they have so little regard when dealing with the lives of the citizens they're supposed to be serving. You know, hit them where it hurts. Property. This country is built on property. It is a hyper capitalistic society. You hit them where it hurts. Property. <laughs> This isn't going to get anything done. This isn't going to get anything done. It's just going to make Steven Crowder laugh at these people and other people other people on the right roll their eyes. Okay. Uh, first off, let's break down sexual fascism. This is what they're using nowadays. I and mean, we could probably bring up the definition a little bit. Oh, that's a fire way of... I didn't think about it. Like, sexual fascism. That is a good way... To coin that, who, 
Steven Crowder is going to make fun of it, but I think it's a good way to coin. Clearly, the concern with fascism is them forcing you to conform, right? By the threat of yes. force, having to conform with a political persuasion, uh, a point of view. Yes, they're right, forcing you to conform argument. with Can the re please, Catholic narrative. And if you make a good argument here, we'll pin the comment on YouTube. How kicking this back to giving the rights back to the states to determine their own abortion laws? How? I uh, that is sec I bet if I said, yo, if you said abortion, not doing, uh, what's it called, not having abortion is Judeo-Christian values, and there was a Jewish person in the room, they rationally so, so would be like, nah, I'm not, I'm not with y'all on that. That's what, that's what the Judeo and Judeo-Christian would say. Not with y'all on that. Actual fascism. Who is forcing you to conform to their view of sexuality here? Is anyone for, are they forbidding you from having sex? Right-wing Christian fundamentalists are forcing us to conform with their sexuality. Well, no, now they are sexual, but with their sexual uh, policies. Pirlo. Yo, he was about to bark, I thought. Anyways. No. Are they forbidding you from having sex with as many partners as you want? No. Are they forbidding No, but they're heading in that direction, Stephen. Purchasing a Vietnamese sex hammock. I can testify no. So, how is there sexual fascism? Oh, wait. It is a nice hammock. Yes, it is a nice hammock. I took a nap on it. I didn't know it was a sex hammock. Well, it's also because it's It's good. It's nice. It came with that wonderful milking table. It's like sleeping on a cloud. Yes. Also has stirrups. It's right in there. So... I, I don't understand. Where's the sexual fascism coming from? Oh, wait, hold on a second. And this is something whether you agree Literally with Literally the point dumbest point. Not, like, he's like, even, where's the sexual fascism? Oh, the policy the Supreme Court just implemented. Like, As it relates to what happens after you've had sex irresponsibly and couldn't be bothered to purchase a 25-cent rubber at a truck stop or use birth control, or if you work at Hobby Lobby, take advantage of the 16 forms of birth control available, which you complained about as a violation of human rights. Yeah, if this was a completely sexually free country, we would have legalized prostitution. And I've gotten in so many arguments on this channel about uh, legalized prostitution, but this is a pro-legalized prostitution channel. And sorry, like, we already don't have as, like, we, we're already not up to the max with, with, with uh, sexual rights. And, like, now they're just taking away shit. It's on par with the Holocaust. Even after all of that, we still believe in many, many options. If you are with child. Four, we just don't want the fifth. What's that? We believe in chastity, abstinence, <laughs> contraception. Yo, 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 yo. These aren't people. Yeah, have you ever met someone that's like, oh, I'm abstinent? They're fucking weirdos. Have you ever met someone that's like, oh, uh, chastity? They're fucking weirdos they're weirdos they they're weird they are i'm telling you yeah this like like humanly it's it's instinctual you know to to have urges to have desires you know like like i parenthood or adopt that's the thing they say this but they don't practice it themselves just not the fifth. But that, you might not you might not agree with me, but guess what? That's not fashion. Yo, parenthood. <sighs> Look, if you can't provide for a child who's gonna grow up in poverty, right? Which is gonna happen because this country doesn't have social safety nets like other countries do. Then, then, then for some people, abortion is the best option. Look, I tw uh, uh, on Instagram earlier, I put, um, fuck, where's my story? I think it was Pramila Jayapal who, um, who, uh, who uh, tweeted this or posted this on Instagram. It goes, these are the states that will ban abortion. They've already said they will. And here's the child poverty rate in those states, okay? Keep in mind, in Italy, they have Sarah McLaughlin commercials for food insecure kids in the United States. 
other European countries have commercials saying, feed American kids. Already to begin with, we're not at a good start, okay? And we're going to make it a whole hell of a lot worse. Anyways, first state, Mississippi, 28% of children live in poverty, okay? Grow up in a household in which the, uh, the uh, median income is less than $25,000. That is considered poverty in the United States. Louisiana, 27%. Arkansas, 22%. Kentucky, 22%. Alabama, 21%. Oklahoma, 20%. So, again, and then she writes, if these GOP state legislators cared about saving lives, wouldn't they invest in lowering child poverty? Exactly, and it goes to a bit. Yeah, I want to... um. George Carlin, abortion, like, he, he nails it on the head. He goes, he says, the Republican Party, when it comes to life, only gives a fuck about the unborn. As soon as that baby exits the womb, it's fucked. You can live in poverty. Good luck. Bye, American dream. Have fun with your existence, you know. Look. <laughs> Why is it that most of the people who are against abortion are people you wouldn't want to fuck in the first place? Huh? Huh? Steven Crowder just said, no, no, not Steven Crowder. Like, Steven Crowder is that guy, yo. All those right wingers, it's true. It went in 2022, for real. Yo, it, it's crazy because all those right wing pundits that are talking uh, 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 anti abortion. Yo, I can't see them getting any pussy at all. I don't know. And I think that the females on the right, like the fem like the Candace Owens and the and the uh Kaylee Matt that, that say they're anti-abortion, I think they're just straight up lying. Like if you really got to know them, they would be totally cool with abortion. I'm telling you. Like, it's just it's just massive but let's just watch the bit. I'm ruining the bit, okay? I'm sorry. Boy, these conservatives are really something, aren't they? They're all in favor of the unborn. They will do anything for the unborn. But once you're born, you're on your own. Yep. Pro-life conservatives are obsessed with a fetus from conception to nine months. After that, they don't want to know about you. They don't want to hear from you. No nothing. No neonatal care, no daycare, no head start, no school lunch, no food stamps, no welfare, no nothing. If you're pre-born, you're... Keep in mind, none of these things because, you know, rich people got to pay less in taxes. Oh, yeah. By the way, anyone's rich and they see this and they're like, yeah, but rich people create jobs. No, they don't. Endless studies. Even Milton Friedman regretted uh, trickle down economics. It was event. It was initially a plan for short term economic growth. We're not supposed to have an entire system built on it, but we've been doing it for the last 40 years. It is what it is, though. you know. Um, yeah, though. this. Remember, the more the less pe money rich people pay in taxes, the less. Uh, safety nets like he just mentioned we have. I'm sorry, I'm gonna keep it plain. You're fine. If you're preschool, you're fucked. <laughs> you're fucked. <laughs> Conservatives don't give a shit about you until you reach military age. Then they think you are just fine, just what they've been looking for. Conservatives want live babies so they can raise them to be dead soldiers. <laughs> Pro-life. Pro-life. Oh yeah, by the way, we could afford all of those things also if we cut military spending. So, George Carlin, you know, really uh, looking like a foreign policy. Looking like a, a really, really, if he was still alive, a presidential candidate. These people aren't pro-life, they're killing doctors. What kind of pro-life is that? What, they'll do anything they can to save a fetus, but if it grows up to be a doctor, they just might have to kill it? 
They're not pro-life. You know what they are? They're anti-woman. Simple as it gets. Anti-woman. They don't like them. They don't like women. They believe a woman's primary role is to function as a broodmare for the state. Pro-life. You don't see any of these white anti-abortion women volunteering to have any... He called it, though. Yo, think about it. That tells you, like, how ahead of the time he was. Like, Republicans wanted to ban abortion even since Roe versus Wade. They, they've been, we've been, we've been in a fight for uh, abortion rights. Black fetuses transplanted into their uteruses, do you? No, you don't see them adopting a whole lot of crack babies, do you? No, that might be something Christ would do. And you won't see... You won't see a lot of these pro-life people dousing themselves in kerosene and lighting themselves on fire. You know, morally committed religious people in South Vietnam knew how to stage a goddamn demonstration, didn't they? Ah. Hey. Oh, man. They knew how to put on a fucking protest. Light yourself on fire! Come on, you moral crusaders, let's see a little smoke to match that fire in your belly. Here's another question I have. How come when it's us, it's an abortion, and when it's a chicken, it's an omelet? <laughs> um, past four, really good point. Um, sh but in the past four administrations, when has poverty been worse? Um, now. Now, the last administration, during the Obama administration, we had the, progressively, po the, the middle class, has just been squeezed and we've had more income inequality. Every administration happens, poverty gets worse, but presidents let's back, Wall Street's doing great, Wall Street's doing great. Those are the people that, that write the checks to their campaigns and shit, and they t cut taxes for them too. So of course they're doing great, you know, but in order to do that, we have to r cut taxes for the, um, Cut taxes for the wealthy. More and more people slip into the uh, slip into poverty. Leave the middle class. You know, it's an economic problem we have. You know, there's there is no there is one policy. Essentially, poverty is worse under Democrat administrations. Not true. Not true. The most detrimental economic. Uh, policy ever passed was from a Republican president, was Ronald Reagan. I'm telling you. The thing is, Democrats have done nothing. I mean, I, I think you came on the cast late because when I opened, I was talking about how Democrats have done nothing to... Uh, the Democrats haven't raised taxes. They've just been purposely incompetent. And people, pretty sure, like yourself, won't vote Democrat because you guys sit down and think Democrats have done nothing to improve my life. And you guys would be right, you know. But this, this, I mean, they're to blame. But income inequality, for the most part, is a result of Republican um, policies. Absolutely. Tax cuts for the rich don't pay for themselves. Increased military spending. I mean, Democrats did increase military spending as well, but not like the Republicans. I mean, these things really hurt um, the middle class because there was less social safety nets. A lot more to... Oh, yeah, of, dude, of course. I mean, but... I mean, this... Uh, he goes, uh, conservatives are doing a lot more to ruin people's lives, though. Absolutely. Um, is going to dramatically hurt the middle class. Um, is it? I mean, yeah. Absolutely, you could draw a link there. Because people that were saving are now going to have to have kids and shit, you know. People that did, couldn't afford to have kids are now going to have this financial burden. Very true. It's going to prevent people from reaching the middle class. It's definitely going to remove people from the middle class. Exact. Yo, and okay, Levi, Levi, Leviathan 84. This, if 
If you guys were at the beginning of the cast, he goes, Dems control the House, the Senate, and the Oval Office. Why are they not doing anything to improve? What the fuck is going on now? Exactly. That's why people who, people who do see Republicans as dangerous will just sit home because Democrats have not done anything to improve their lives because they too, the Democrats in power, them personally, have benefited from Republican policies. I said this at the uh, beginning of the cast. But there are people that are going to take a chance on Republicans because of this very thing. Dems not doing a damn thing. They're going to take a chance. There's a reason why Bernie Sanders outpolled Donald Trump in every single poll. And Donald Trump what was able to beat any corporate loser that was put across his table. That includes Hillary fucking Clinton. Um, Alright? So like... Really, people are, were just de people that vote Republican. It's not like it's not like they like the Republican Party per se. They're just taking a chance. Some of them, and then there's some that hate the Republicans, but no Democrats really haven't done anything to improve their life, so they'll just stay home. You know, these are both factors working against the Republicans in the 2022 uh, midterms and the 2024 uh, presidential uh, election. You know, people like this chatter right here, Leviathan 84, is is what a lot of the country is actually thinking, you know. But again, I say, this election is not like the, everyone says the election, the, uh, this is the most important election. The most, <clears throat> this is act actually the most important election, though. We've never had the prospect of fascism, voter suppression, even basic rights like abortion being stripped, I mean, they're only going to strip more uh, happening. It's not a matter of, oh, fuck, we got more tax cuts and less social safety. Nets. No, there is an agenda to garnish power for a select few people that um, is very uh, threatening to not only democracy, but just to standing in the Western world. Well, I vote my wall. My wall is always better off in Republican control. I don't even care about the fringe issues. I don't even like kids. Do you, all right, this is a personal question, but do you, are you, are you, are you a top 1%? Are you successful? Do, are you entitled to the Trump tax cuts? Let's put it that way. Uh, Leviathan. Do, did you qualify for the tax, Trump tax cuts? Anyways, while he answers that question, I'm going to keep this rolling. <laughs> You didn't qualify for the tax cuts. You didn't qualify for the tax cuts. You're considered middle class, upper middle class though. You're doing well. You're doing well. But even 94K, you didn't qualify for the Trump tax cuts. 250K and up. Or 300K and up. I'm not, I, I don't remember the figure, but 300K and up, you got the Trump tax cuts. But you don't qualify for the Trump tax cuts. You had the same, you've had the same tax rate for almost 15, yo, you tell me how long you've had uh, the same tax rate, like 20 some percent. How long have you had your, your tax rate for? Yeah. Are we so much better than chickens? 33 percent? Yeah. When did this happen? That we passed. Okay. They didn't get that nice little 18 if you, 18% would have been nice, but you have to make 300K for that. See, that's the problem. That's the problem right there. You shouldn't be paying a higher tax rate than someone that makes way more money than you. You see, we have a problem with the tax code and Democrats always pledge on fixing it. But they never do. They're purposely incompetent because guess what? They benefit from that same tax code too. But 33%, you shouldn't be paying that if someone making 300K and up is only paying 18. Being single with no kids, is, no, that helps you a lot. What do you mean? You don't have any responsibilities. Chickens and goodness. Name six ways we're better than chickens. See, nobody can do it. 
You know why? Because chickens are decent people. You don't see chickens hanging around in drug gangs, do you? Uh, you don't see a chicken strapping some guy to a chair and hooking up his nuts to a car battery, do you? When's the last chicken you heard about came home from work and beat the shit out of his hand, huh? Doesn't happen. Because chickens are decent people. But well, let's get back to this abortion shit. Now, is a fetus a human being? This seems to be the central question. Well, if a fetus is a human being, how come the census doesn't count them? If a fetus is a human being, how come when there's a miscarriage, they don't have a funeral? If a fetus is a human being, how come people say we have two children and one on the way, instead of saying we have three children? People say life begins at conception. I say life began about a billion years ago, and it's a continuous process. Continuous, just keeps rolling along. Rolling, rolling, rolling along. I said, you know something? Listen, you can go back further than that. What about the carbon atoms? Huh? Human life could not exist without carbon. So is it just possible that maybe we shouldn't be burning all this coal? <laughs> just looking for a little consistency here in these anti-abortion arguments. See, the really hardcore people will tell you... Consistency in the Republican Party are not, in the sperm, they're not the synonymous. Egg, which is usually a few moments after the man says, gee, honey, I was going to pull out, but the phone rang and it startled me. Fertilization. <laughs> but even after the egg is fertilized, it's still six or seven days before it reaches the uterus and pregnancy begins. And not every egg makes it that far. 80% of a woman's fertilized eggs are rinsed and flushed out of her body once a month during those delightful few days she has. <laughs> they wind up on sanitary napkins, and yet they are fertilized eggs. So basically what these anti-abortion people are telling us is that any woman who's had more than one period is a serial killer. <laughs> Consistency. Consistency. Hey, hey. If they really want to get serious, what about all the sperm that are wasted when the state executes a condemned man and one of these pro-life guys who's watching comes in his pants, huh? Here's a guy standing over there with his jockey shorts full of little Vinnies and Debbies, and nobody's saying a word to the guy. Not every ejaculation deserves a name. Now, speaking of consistency, Catholics, which I was until I reached the age of reason. <laughs> hey. Catholics and other Christians are against abortions and they're against homosexuals. Well, who has less abortions than homosexuals? <laughs> Leave these fucking people alone, for Christ's sakes. There is an entire class of people guaranteed never to have an abortion. <laughs> and the Catholics and Christians are just tossing them aside. You'd think they'd make natural allies. Go look for consistency in religion. And speaking of my friends the Catholics, when John Cardinal O'Connor of New York and some of these other cardinals and bishops have experienced their first pregnancies and their first labor pains and they've raised a couple of children on minimum wage, then I'll be glad to hear what they have to say about abortion. I'm sure it'll be interesting. I like it too. But, but, In the meantime, what they ought to be doing is telling these priests who took a vow of chastity to keep their hands off the altar boys. <laughs> you can for yourself, Father. You know? He's Irish, and he Jesus knows about said, this. Suffer the little children, come unto me. That's not what he was talking about. Fire. Um Oh, let's, we got this, uh, do nothing from Susan Collins, um, let's see the brain rot, though, on the feed, let's go, what's going on? <laughs> Why are they 
Yo, Breitbart is insane, bro. <laughs> Breitbart, it's the most astonishingly deep corruption the White House in America is, and Biden just cheerfully lies about it every single day. And because the news media wants to protect or refuse to do is the kind of investigation they should. And then they put this fucking picture. <laughs> <laughs> this has got to be horrible. Yeah, yeah, this is, um, oh, let's see, let's just check out this video right quick. They're going to call her insane. I want to hear her. Do you know the importance on having more followers and likes on social media? Follow. Moving on to new criticism of the Biden administration's so-called disinformation board, Senator Tom Cotton tweeting, the federal government has no business creating a ministry of truth. Senator Marco Rubio, nothing else we are working on will matter if we don't put an end to Biden's ministry of truth. Senator Marsha Blackburn, this goes against everything our country stands for. What is... And we're learning more. Biden establishes a ministry. Joe Biden's Ministry of Truth. It will combat misinformation. Oh, this is dangerous. No, 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 no. Come on, Joe. You want to hear what I think about something like a Ministry of Truth? I feel like it's bad. Yeah, we got a lot of disinformation out there, and it's mostly from the right, but um, we cannot have a ministry of truth. We, the only way you solve misinformation is by uh, funding education. For You have to teach people how to access um, good information. I'm serious, you, you do. Um, however, you can't do that when you continually again cut taxes for rich people and continue to increase the budget for the military this is a theme on this channel i swear to god yeah but let's hear what this person had to say we shouldn't get to the point where there's a ministry there needs to be a ministry of truth this is bad you know this is like putting a band-aid on like even if say a ministry of truth was uh was implemented that's like putting a band-aid on a much bigger problem, which is education. About the new disinformation czarina, Nina Jankovic, who apparently spends a great deal of her time creating TikTok jingles. Information laundering is really quite ferocious. It's when a hopster takes some lies and makes them sound precocious by saying them in Congress or a mainstream outfit. So disinformation's origins are slightly less atrocious. It's how you hide a little lie, it's how you hide a little lie, it's how you hide a little lie, it's how you hide a little lie. Cringe. Cringe. And it's like, it's cringe and it's like, who is a lackey for corporate dems? Like, what type of life is that? To where you go on TikTok and do jingles for corporate dem propaganda for real, you know? Jimmy this. Well, they kind of cut off a pretty important part of the song, like where they're like, Rudy Giuliani, maybe she's going to drop some facts there. Look, when Rudy Giuliani shared bad intel from Ukraine. Why are you turning off the video there? Oh my God, there was something. 
almost seems like this is some sort of ruse or red herring to prevent us from talking about everything else that's horrible going on in this country. Yo, she looks like she's auditioning for a reality show called America's Got Issues. <laughs> who, who let this insane person in front of a camera, let alone running a disinformation, <sighs> that when the media are talking about this story, and this is why so many Republicans are outraged about the idea of this Ministry of Truth, is because it's actually used to lie. Clever branding, but I don't think anybody's falling for it after that ridiculous video. Right. If the government is trying... It's probably not going to be a thing, and the Republicans are just going to pretend it is. And ...to stop free Americans from saying things that people in government don't like, Anita Vogel, that kind of sounds sort of like a violation of the First Amendment. Yeah, it really does, Dagan. And, you know, back to that video for just a moment, though, it really feels it is, so it, unhinged. It today. is a violation of the First Amendment. We shouldn't have got to... Yo, the, the, even if it, like, even if it does, they combat misinformation, like, accurately, like, you know, they have, like, they only highlight like, peer-reviewed shit or whatever, um, I don't know, but say in this grand scheme of things this shit worked, it would still be unconstitutional, you, and if, if, if it worked, like, you're not solving the real problem, which is education. I said that before, but it's, this is unconstitutional. I'm troubled they couldn't find someone else for the job. She doesn't look like a serious person. And then, as Jimmy pointed out, the disinformation board comes to us from the same people who pushed the Russian collusion hoax and labeled the Hunter Biden laptop story as disinformation. So to me, the board starts out with zero credibility. I don't think it's going to last. Uh, I, John, I want you to listen to what Jen Psaki had to say, uh, tr trying her level best to defend this disinformation board. Listen to this. It sounds like the objective of the board is to prevent disinformation and misinformation from traveling around the country in a range of communities. I'm not sure who opposes that effort. Uh, uh, the I, Constitution. I'm not sure who opposes that effort. How about everybody who cares about the Constitution and doesn't want scary poppins over here? Okay, <laughs> like the way I explain it, I'm here literally wearing a t-shirt, okay, in my room, okay. Literally, there's weed here, there's an ashtray there. I explained it better than this woman, okay? This, like, I explained it in a more professional manner than this lady. I, this is scare pop and, you know, whatever. What they can and can't say. Or, uh, again, she, she, she was um, called the uh, Hunter, La Hunter Biden laptop with mm. Trump disinformation product. Trump campaign product. Whoa, what a sentence. She, 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 this is they, this. She sounds like Joe Biden in this. What? Can and can't say. Or uh, again, she, she, she was um, called the uh, Hunter La Hunter Biden laptop with mm. Trump disinformation product. Trump campaign product. That that's right, and I I, I agree fully with, with all the points of view that was shared in, in this block here. But I'll tell you, this woman is just about as serious. My I'm like reading the subtitles and it's like Harvard law professor, but he hasn't finished his GED from 20 years ago. Well, what was that sentence? You know, not even the, the subtitles. The subtitles were a massive fragment. You, oh, man. God. She's on the news, man. <laughs> this is the level of insanity. He Go ahead, Jimmy. Harvard State, Gianno. Harvard State. <laughs> well, that he can do, but uh, Harvard Law, no. So, you know, it's, it's just really interesting to me that the Democrats are always the ones who claim to be presenting facts, and they're not the ones that are presenting facts. We talk about. Because the Republicans are. No, they're both engaged in disinformation, but the Republicans engage in far. For noticeably far more disinformation and conspiracy than than the Democrats. Let's be honest here. They have people in Congress talking about Jewish space lasers. Really? Like about the intelligence officials.
who said it was disinformation, as you guys have mentioned. We talk about the fact that even Joe Biden, when he said that he wasn't going to leave any Americans behind in Afghanistan, mm -hmm. that was disinformation. Are they going to go against their own people on disinformation, or is this a level of playing field? Because uh, Elon Musk is now going to make Twitter a free speech zone. And that's the question that we all need to be asking ourselves. They, the Democrats, those on the left, big tech, and the media, once they see an opening, they try to seize it immediately and try to reverse course on, uh, say, for example, the Twitter issue. So they now want to have a way to say, no, Twitter, you're wrong. This is disinformation. Since you won't put a label on it, we will. Uh, Jimmy Fallon, well, please don't mm -hmm. sing. Uh, let me just say that. But this, I do think that this is an example of Joe Biden being an absentee president, yeah. where you've got Ron Klain clearly mm -hmm. making. No, it. it's the only thing that's absentee is the fact that like he's it's absentee that he's doing nothing about education. Like this is his, this is his solution to misinformation. You know, he's absent on that issue, education. A lot of these decisions and even more egregious is the fact that none of this ran through Congress at all and they clearly were that and and that reasonable Democrats surely can't be on board with this no there's no way what this really exposes is the weakness of this administration's leadership oh god they're gonna try to paint him as far left I love this confident enough in their ability to sell their ideas that they'd rather just stifle any type of debate, dissent, or, mm -hmm. you know, objective criticism of what they're doing with this administration, which is running the country into the ground, Dagan. This is a mess. But the thing I keep coming back to is what uh. you said. This is not who Joe Biden was his whole yeah. life. Joe Biden as a president mm. is the equivalent of the elderly relative who has dietary restrictions. You ever <laughs> go out to dinner with grandpa, uh. and grandpa's like, I'll have the lasagna. But before the waiter can leave the table, you have to grab him and be like, grandpa can't have cheese, bring him the chicken, he won't know the difference. That's Biden. Biden ran for president on I'll have the moderation. Not a good and joke. And Pelosi grabbed the waiter and was like, Grandpa can't have the moderation, bring him the bacon wrap socialism instead. He won't know the difference. <laughs> and here we are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would love for these people to tell me, tell me one socialist thing Democrats have done. Tell me one socialist thing the Biden administration has ever talked about doing done whispered tell me one he's bacon wrapped socialist like yo i feel like the the audience at home is just sitting there like oh i love bacon i love bacon socialism i oh they get their mind twirling and they're like they said the thing i love the most and the thing i hate the most in the same sentence my neurons are are moving they're moving i love bacon but i hate socialism you know like i, I they like this is all trigger words for like the audience at home. <laughs> and you, it's, you know, we're laughing, about, I, but it's not funny. It's scary. No. Yeah, it is. It's sad also. It's very yeah. sad. You know? And Dagan, if, if I may, I, I want to know what is a reasonable Democrat these days? Because when you get people like Joe Manchin. Oh, this guy is a fucking, uh, he's a pawn. He's a pawn for the right. He's being used. Yep. Already called it. Already called it. Because he just, uh, yo, this is. His whole demeanor from the beginning was actor-esque. Pawn. Pawn. Republican black guy getting paid to be the Republican black guy. Got it. And who speaks out. They really want to push him out of the party. They don't want him to be a Democrat. Bill Maher calling Democrats out on their mess. They don't want him to be a part of the party anymore. The Democratic Party is now the party of the extreme. Just like Elon Musk put out that tweet showing that in 2008 where he was, 2012, and now oh, God. the conservatives are bringing more folks to the right than uh, any Democrat ever could. Yeah, what am I talking about that there's somehow <laughs> reasonable Democrats out there that people who are, that most Democrats should uh, not be on board with this? Because as David Harsani from the National Post, uh, excuse me, the National Review wrote, uh, he was talking about, he said, these are the same people uh, who have said that the three and a half trillion dollar spending bill costs zero dollars, <laughs> that showing an ID is tantamount to Jim Crow 2.0, yeah. and that your sex relies entirely on your perception. So they're going to sort out the accuracy of, of rhetoric. That's it. I'll just leave it at that. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was rough.
rent is going up he's got to sure ensure the donors that nothing's going to change all right um i think that's it for today um Leviathan, thank you um, for your participation. That was great. Um, Y'all were great. Um, this is going to be on YouTube. Uh, follow at Donald Espada Comedy. Uh, Twitter, real Donald Espada, you know, etc., etc. All right. Um, Y'all be good.